What's going on, sports fans? Welcome to another week of the San Diego High School Basketball Show on San Diego Prep Insider. I am Christian Pedersen. This is Birdman Bergen. This is Tommy Mo Mose? Yes. Tommy Mose. Mose. Um, and before we get anywhere in life, we have to address something, guys, that I just, breaking news, we'll put that on the scroll. Um, apparently, the three of us are not the biggest clowns in San Diego High School Basketball. Apparently, Davian Famber used to have a career as a comedian. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Coach, anytime you want to turn your sarcastic clowning on me on Twitter into some public just laughter, help brighten all of our lives, you're more than welcome to take any one of these wait, three Wait, wait. You don't remember the interview with AJ at the CIF Finals? I do. I do. I do. Oh, but I, I just I, I want him to do a five-minute set. Like, I feel like there's some jokes that he's got in the hopper. Um, maybe maybe we have him do a roast of the entire county of basketball, something like that. Oh, that would be great. Maybe we put something together like that. Look, in the meantime, we've got all your basketball needs covered here in San Diego for the, the, the week of high school basketball that was actually kind of interesting. It was. Like, there, there was... There are a couple of tournaments going on. There were a couple of big upsets. There were a couple of surprises. I think that... Uh, we can start with the top 10, mm -hmm. but we're just going to do full-time hoops as top 10 because right now, more or less some combination of Mission Bay, Torrey Pines, yeah. Foothills. I, I think we can all agree that arguing over the minutia of 10 and 9 right now is just kind of a waste of time. So, Aaron, this week we'll go – Tommy, if it's okay with you, this week we'll go with just the full-time hoops top 10. You can catch ours on Twitter and Instagram at SD Prep Insider. Uh, let's do it this way. Aaron, you'll read it off. Tommy, you will agree or disagree. Okay. Um, I made no changes at the top. I think it's too early. So my number one was Mission Bay. Eh, that's all right. That's a tough week. I, th they did. Um, they lost a couple of games, but they played infinitely better competition than some of the other teams, um, you know, just below them. So I'm going to. For all the fun we had talking straight the schedule through football season when it's only 10 games, mm -hmm. I love it in basketball when we're talking about 20 and 30 games that include these mega, mega tournaments. Yeah. I mean, Battle Zone, both Foothills and. Um, both Foothills and Mission Bay were in that, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt right now, okay. and just say that they're going to get thing they're going to get things back, you know, back in place. And next couple of tournaments, we're going to see them take off. All right, number two. Number two, Tory Pines. Agree. Um, number three, Saint Augustine. Agree. Number four, Foothills Christian. Agree. Okay. Number five, I've got La Jolla Country Day. Agree. And they're undefeated right now. You're, you're, you're welcome to put that at number one. Uh, number six, I got Vista. Mm. I like that. That's a good, that, no, that no. Is a, that is a good response. I know. You know what? I, I, there are some people that aren't sold on, you know, the new look Vista. No Taurus Samuels, no Isaiah Morris, who, by the way, are off to excellent starts to their college careers. But uh, It's okay because Vista's still not sold on me, so yeah. it's all good. I mean, they're 4-1. and one. Their only loss is to a really good Temecula Valley team. Uh, actually, 5-1 and one after last night beating Orange Glen. You bring up the numbers, too. That's, that's also an interesting part of the basketball season is people progress at very different rates. San Diego just plays their first game of the season last night. Valley Center hasn't played yet. Valley Center hasn't played yet. Other teams are six or seven games in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's why we're trying to speed through just this part of it. It's yeah. a little bit minutiae. It's not quite as set in stone until you get to what about three weeks out four weeks out from the playoff a month in we kind of know what's going on uh, then i've had my first couple changes parker uh moves ahead of cathedral definitely agree you know you have that one point win parker and could be the, the sleeper number one team in the county if if if, if things change and, and go in a certain way i'll i'll say this they got a lot to climb they got the, a lot to climb i'm not making but, but i will say this though you know get they have a point guard that gives them a puncher's chance in any game, because yeah. there are very few pl players that can guard Kimo Ferrari full court. No, it's amazing. Um, San Marcos at nine. Uh, Definitely agree. Yeah, they, they took a tough one last night, though, against Saints. I mean, that one's uh, – I had a college coach who was there watching, and he said it was a clinic. That was the words he used. Um, and 10, Santa Fe Christian. Definitely agree. That, that was a team we had um, – or I had in my personal top 10 last week. That yeah, we, started, we started the season off with them at number yeah. 10. Uh, they switched with Montgomery there. And – I, I mean, I think the crazy thing is that we're also talking about 11 through like 15 or 16, yeah. right there also. Yeah. There, there's not a huge, there might be, as we saw with Saints, a drop off between number three and number 10, mm -hmm. but the drop off between six and 20 is not that steep this year. Not so we're talking about a really loaded 
top ten. We but we're talk, also we keep talking about parity in San Diego hoops for the past couple years, and this year's no different. Yeah, but and, and that's just exciting because right there we're only talking really about D one teams. We haven't even gotten to the conversation that D's two through five are also decently impressive like it, it's we got a lot to get to and that's why we have our game balls segment that's where we get to actually get a chance to spread things around a little bit tommy we went to aaron first yeah. on the the last segment so we will come your way now what do you got in terms of us for game balls i've got well three and a half i guess three of them for you but first game balls three game balls and one deflated one well i got i got a pair of kids that go like together okay. as one um, so we got we had two kids from Christian, Jack Larson and Miles Williams had 25 and 24 respectively in the winning. Same game? Colorado. Yeah, in the same game. Uh, Jack also had 24 in the game before that, so he's off to a hot start. Yeah. Jackson. Uh, next at Maranatha, Nate Salas, 25 points in their win over Santana. And then Del Norte, This is a, I, I like the rebound stat too. Zach Moore had 17 points, 15 rebounds in their win over Mission Vista. Yeah, we had uh, Alex Moore on our show uh, for football. But he was already pretty confident what Del Norte is going to be bringing uh, in the basketball sense. Uh, I will get to mine really quickly. I, will, I want to bring up Saints for yeah. that clinic, as you mentioned, yeah. um, uh, that win over San Marcos, because that was also on the road at San Marcos. Yeah. And I know that home field is not an enormous thing always in high school basketball the well, way it can be in other in sports. Especially in season when you know, the crowd's not really – you know they don't have the sellout crowd they would, you know, during conference home games. But it, but it's also it's also no home crowd. It's just yeah. no home energy. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know, a five. To, I'll give you five to ten points less mm-hmm. on the road. Saints still gets a twenty point win over San Marcos, uh, Montgomery an 82-60 win over a Mira Mesa team that still getting up to speed a little bit. Noah Tumblin and some of the football players. Are they even playing yet? Yeah, no. I'm saying they're transitioning yeah. over still, so it's not quite Mira Mesa, but a twenty point win for a Montgomery team that took some really hard losses in tournament play. I mean, that's a team that needs big wins. So they get big wins. And, and finally, I want to address Rancho Bernardo, 61-57 over Cathedral Catholic. And all, Were you guys there? Was somebody there? No, we, we, were, we were doing the radio show. You were on the phone with yeah, us, I think, during right, the actual right. game. But, I mean, they also survived a 20-point 20 20 fourth quarter onslaught from Cathedral. Yeah. I mean, Cathedral outscored them by eight in that fourth quarter, and Arby still held on to win. This is a this is a pretty interesting sign of potential weakness or potential strength. We won't know for a couple more weeks, but those are my game balls for now. Aaron, you want to hit us with yours? Yeah, yeah. Um, first one I'm going to give is to a sophomore from El Camino, Kiave Love. Listen to this line. 22 points, 15 rebounds, 10 steals. A triple, triple a triple double for Kiave Love with steals in a sixty to thirty five win over Ramona last night. What? That's big time. Bro, that's I I, <laughs> I I saw I saw footage of Ramona on their on their IG. I mean, they showed all their buckets. I guess they weren't showing you know <laughs> Kiave laying waste to the to the team. Uh, but yeah, great game for Kiave Love. I know him pretty well. He played. He's a club teammate of my son. So. You know, both of them actually had big nights last night, so that was really cool to see. Uh, Savon Davis, uh, 21 points and nine assists um, in a in a win they needed over a good Los Altos team. No Boogie Ellis, no Ronnie Ladding, no Jay Norton. They still get it done. Savon has arguably the best game of his career. Well, Savon also, I think, is something that he is only – being punished for being on a team that's deep. Like, and and I, I say punished just in terms of his notoriety and his notability. I mean, he balled out. He had double digits in the CIF finals last year. Like, he would pro- – I mean, w- is it safe to say that Savon would start at any team in San Diego? And- he would s- take away the T at the end of start. He'd be the star of a number of teams. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so it's, good, it's good to see him finally getting a chance. Yeah, to get those no, that's awesome. No. And then I'm going to give my final game ball a pair of kids – uh, one would be Noah Fields, and the other one would be Pat McLaughlin from uh, Rancho RBV. Buena Vista. Exactly. Uh, Mac, the foreign import man. Taking care of business down at the um, at the Hilltop Tournament right now. Uh, went over Canyon Crest to start. Ooh, day of that is tonight. I think so. I got to go check that out. Yeah, so I'm heading there too. Uh, yeah. Got to give got to give credit to uh, Noah. Had 22 points in that win over Canyon Crest, and Pat followed up with a 25.53 point make effort against East Lake. First they had the Big Mac, now we got the Patty Mac. Um, 
those are the games that just happened over the past couple of days. We also like to talk about the games that are yet to come. Yeah. And this is this is going to be a really fun segment all season mm-hmm. long because there is no limit to the amount of San Diego high school games that I can throw this guy's way to just relentlessly stress him out. Um, is the daughter going to play basketball too also? Or are you going to just be able to stop it at AJ and, and not have to be a... a she wants to play. Fair enough. The family's in, man. Um, <laughs> our first game, Point Loma at Hoover. Mm-hmm. How do we want to do this? Do we want to just both of you guys start scream Tommy. it at the same time? Uh, Tommy, we'll start with you. Point Loma, Hoover. Who you take? With Point Loma, keep it short and sweet. I'll let Aaron bring the meat to the conversation. Short and sweet, bring the meat. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Hoover gets this one done. Hoover needs a win badly. They're 0-5 to start the year. Uh, actually, this probably is one of the biggest surprises to me because I have them in my top uh, 40. Uh, they've lost a couple of close games, but they've also, you know, they've gotten hammered a few games too. I think they're due. I, I like Andrew Peters and Wayne Hampton coming out having big games. Uh, Point Loma, they're in a bit of transition too. They're getting JL Skinner back from football if – um, I believe he's playing this year. I have it on good authority that J.L. Skinner is going to phone it in he this will, season. He will oh. be there, though. He will be the team Oh, wow. Yeah. I also have it on good authority that J.L. Skinner would lose in a one-on-one basketball game to Casey Grandfors. We'll just leave that at that. <laughs> um, I, like, I like some of Point Loma's pieces. I'm not completely sold on them yet. I, I think guard play is going to be kind of the, the big – common denominator with both these teams which guards really get up for it uh you know point loma has a talented sophomore gabe harrison a nice junior and jacob tonner de carlo but they're missing one of their leaders from last year uh sophomore trent bell he's out and um I guess indefinitely, and that really hurts them. So I'm going to go with Hoover narrowly. It's a pair of schools that need wins. It's a pair of schools that we both, I think, assume will right the ship by the end of the season, make it somewhere into a five seed, you know, fight their way into the playoffs. They'll be fine. But early season, you can always need those wins really badly. Next one, Bishops and Christian Rose, they are going to be taking on San Diego Cavers, Why? the defending Division Four champion San Diego Why? Cavers, um, because when your boy drops 20-plus in the first game of the season, we got to talk about it. Yeah. Can I give a late game ball out to him? Sure. All right, fair enough. Late game ball out to A.J. Bergen for scoring a lot of points and then the one time that he walked off in the middle of one of our interviews. Uh, <laughs> that was great. That was great, yes. Uh, media savvy. He also, sat, he also sat in for some of the more legendary uh, – uh, post game or uh, playoff prediction podcast we've I was ever done. Say, uh, he knows where all the bodies are buried. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so look, we got bishops at San Diego. This one to me is going to be an interesting coming out party for San Diego. I see San Diego winning this one big. Okay. I'm gonna go with bishops here. Christian Rose being a senior, he's been there before. I think this bishops team is gonna be probably one of the better bishops teams we've seen in a while. So I'm gonna go with the Knights. I disagree with this being one of the better Bishops teams we've seen in a while. I thought last year's team was really good, and then Nikhil Cross decided to go jump ship to St. Augustine, uh, which kind of takes a little bit of the you know shine off of what would have been a really strong year. And then they also lost Merrick Thompson to transfer. Um, you know, he started for them all last year. But this is a solid Bishops team. Uh, if you look at common opponents, Bishops beat uh, Morse by 24. San Diego beat Morse by 20. So... I'm thinking this is going to be a very close game, but I think that when you have a senior in Christian Rose that's been in some of those tight games before, I think Bishops ekes this one out, and this is no fault of your own, son. Please don't give me heat if you guys win this game. I know I won't hear the end of it. Our next game, uh, Francis Parker, who we addressed earlier in the top ten, they are at Poway this this week. And Poway always, though, seems to be one of those teams that – no matter how high or low they are ranked, they know how to bring somebody down to their level, play their version of the game at home. Yeah. So is this a trap game for Parker, or do you guys see Parker running away with it? I see Parker winning this one, but I think it will be pretty close. Um, Poway is very physical this year. I mean, they've got five or six guys over 6'4", um, several of whom weigh over 200 pounds. Yeah, they, they play disruptor ball. Yeah, they, 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 they do. They know, how to, they know how to stay physical. And and they've got one of the more unheralded point guards in the um, in the county, Adam Severe Jr., who's had some really big moments already in his career, and he's already gotten off to a pretty strong start. 
but I think that Parker right now is playing at a pretty high level. They're going to be hard to stop. Yeah, Kimo Ferrari, I'm telling you, it's, you know, it's just tough to keep him from getting where he wants to go on the floor. And when you spread them out, you know, other teams out with shooters like Max Gwynn, Daryl Sledge, um, utility guys like Jacob Jovian, and a big of your own with Matt Bender in the starting five, and not to mention – You've got a freshman, a couple freshmen over there who are already starting to play pretty well. Vinny Ferrari, that's uh, Kimo's younger brother. Yeah, sounds familiar. Little one, man. And Camden McCormick, who's you know just coming back from the football field. I mean, he's going to get um, some good minutes as the season goes on. I think this one's decided within six points, but I'm going to pick Parker. I'm going to pick, pick Parker, too. They get, you know, uh, Gwynn, Bender last year had to sit out a little bit. They have the full season under their belt from last year plus this year. So this is a really strong Parker team. I think a team that will – in the league even have a chance. Yeah, that'll be kind of interesting watching them have the whole season together. Yeah, and didn't they win a division last year? Yes. Half, with only you know, playing half a season? Yes, together? and one of the most – don't take this as like an insult insult, but one of the most boring championship games of all time, <laughs> watching Matt Bender just back people down and lay it up off the glass for two points – was very much like the anti-Golden State Championship type thing. But, I mean, they, they ran away with it. So, no, not hating, just sarcastically being like, way to go on the media end of things there. Uh, next one, Carlsbad at Valley Center. Valley Center just getting their season underway. Carlsbad was in that championship game last year against Mount Miguel. Ooh. So, I mean, uh, this, is, this is probably going to be Carlsbad's game to lose. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Carlsbad here. They've also challenged themselves. They've played Jay Sarah already, which is a really tough team. Yeah. They're going to play San Clemente, I think, either tonight, tonight. or tomorrow. Yeah. So they're, they're playing a tough out-of-section yeah. schedule right now, and I think that will help them out when they play Valley Center. A team that, like we mentioned, I think they're playing their first game either tonight or tomorrow. So yeah. I've I got to go with that. Yeah, Valley Center lost their, I guess, the, the guy that was the focal point of their future, Mickey Chu, who transferred to Orange Glen. Uh, you know, that that really hurts them moving forward. I think Carlsbad wins this one pretty emphatically. Like you said, teams that challenge themselves against tough out-of-section opponents typically, you know, are a lot stronger against some of the teams that play a more local schedule. And given the fact that they've played more games already, I mean, this sometimes doesn't work. I mean, I assume that Morse would probably give San Diego a game just because they had had some reps under their belt and San Diego was, you know, getting off to a, a start without any of their football players and without arguably who's going to be their um, second best player, Steve Stenson. But this is different. I think Carlsbad handles business. Last game, El Cajon Valley at San Pasquale. Uh, make a bird noise. Um. You know, this is this this actually is a pretty intriguing game because I think you. I think San Pasquale has a chance to. Um, if they're still in D5, I think they have a chance to make some noise there. Obviously, they're a bigger school in Division 5, so naturally they should have an advantage there. This El Cajon Valley team is also a sleeper. They've got a kid, a 6'4 wing by the name of Davion Rogers, who's really solid. Um, averaging 18 points, nine boards, three assists, three steals to start the year. I had a chance to see him a lot during fall league because um, um, AJ's team played in the same league that they hosted. Uh, they're tough. They defend. I think they get this one. El Cajon Valley. I'm going to go. I, I, would you count that as an upset? No. No, I'm going to go with them as well. They're 3-1. and one. They're going to play tonight. I think they'll win tonight. They'll be 4-1 going into this game. I think there's a lot of confidence when you have a record like that going into some of these early season games. I'm going to go with the Braves. You know, I definitely – I picked this game for a reason that there are some of these smaller teams that we have to give love to early because mm -hmm. they're going to go on runs. And this El Cajon Valley team, I think – has a path of least resistance type vibe for their season. That they, they will be set up to have 15 wins going into the playoffs. I, I'll say this, though. Their league, even though it it's kind of down in terms of talent, I think you're going to have them, you know, there's going to be a battle at the bottom there. Yeah, I mean, they got tough sledding toward yeah. the end of the season. But yeah. I'm saying that they'll pick up – They'll pick up steam right now in the middle. We'll see what they're really made of. Then they'll get into the playoffs, and they'll, and they'll do quite well. Yeah, because they're um, still in Division Four, I believe, yeah. and I think they've got a chance to be one of the better teams there. Exactly. That'll do it for our week of trying our best to act like we know anything about San Diego high school basketball. Look, come back next week, though, because – now that we're out of football season, we're having time to actually plan this thing out. we got new segments coming your way. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, where can they find all your stuff? At Full Time Hoops 1, IG, um, and Twitter. You're stepping up the IG game a little bit this year. Are you connected more with the millennials? I'm trying to hang out a little bit. I'm like that Steve Buscemi meme where I've got the hat backwards. Oh, like, hey, what's up, fellow kids? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we will say adios, sports fans. We'll see you next week. Peace, young ones.